Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, I have a special guest, and we're going to talk about how to reach your goals without burnout. And we're going to dive into giving permission to take up space, how to have self-love in business, and how to reach your goals without burnout. So welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. So over the past 20 years, I have developed a weight loss program where there are no pills, no potions, no diets to follow, no insane workouts, no massive cardio, none of that. With my background as a professional ballet dancer and teacher, a medical degree in physical therapy, a personal trainer, and a health coach, I have boiled weight loss down to doing three things, fueling your body, moving your body and managing your mind. Managing your mind is the biggest part. So I know you are tired of battling your weight. You don't have to anymore. Imagine in six months, you are calm, relaxed around food. You're able to do daily activities like walking upstairs with more ease. You're having more fun because you no longer feel like a prisoner in your body. And you know exactly how to lose weight and maintain it. Even if you're on a vacation, on holiday, busy at work, or it's a Tuesday. So if you're serious about your health and wellness and you're ready to lose a weight for good, I want to invite you to schedule a call with me. Go to shapeitupfitness.com slash call and get started today. So my special guest today is a business mindset coach who believes when you connect people to their purpose, there is no limit to what they can do. She empowers her clients to go inward and own their truth. So no matter what their circumstances are currently, they can embrace growth and cultivate unbreakable belief in themselves, which allows them to achieve their business and personal goals. So welcome Susie Trigg Tucker to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Nicole, and hello everyone. Very excited to be here today. Yeah, I am so excited for you to be here because I love your approach to business. Um, You know, I follow you on Instagram and um, I just love, you're just like a, a, you just remind me of like a ray of sunshine (laughs) every time I see your posts. So tell everybody, you're welcome. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you got started in your business. Okay. Well, thank you so much. First of all, that, and that is lovely to hear. And Okay. So I started in my business in 2020, um, a little bit of background on myself. I was a school teacher for 12 years. That is my, you know, I went to school to be a teacher and was a teacher for 12 years and then got really burned out in teacher. So burnout is something that I've been familiar with, um, in a couple of different <laughs> careers. And I started working in the wine industry after that as a trainer for sales and hospitality for wine wine, uh, winery sales teams. And then I experienced burnout in that. And I started getting the itch during that job, which was a really fun job to really go inward and find what I was meant to do. Because while it was fun traveling to wine countries and teaching winery sales teams, I knew that that was not my purpose. And I am someone who's very spiritual. I'm someone who knows that I'm here to serve a bigger purpose. Um, and I'm a writer. So I've always loved writing ever since I was a little girl. I've used to write poetry when I was in middle school. And um, I thought, you know, my, my purpose was to become an author and share. I didn't know what at that time. And long story short, right before the pandemic, I had left the job in the wine industry, but I was still consulting for them. And I hired my first life coach. It was someone that I followed on Instagram. And she said, Hey, I just started out and I've got $40 sessions. (laughs) And I was like, okay, I don't know what this is, but sounds good. I want a life coach. And it changed my life. She was incredible. Um, I had been someone who had gone to years of therapy and while therapy was amazing, I just felt like this was something so different. I felt seen and understood and supported in a way that I had not felt before in therapy. And I I said, what what is this? And I just felt this connection to to coaching. Um, Something that I, you know, realized about myself is I'm a teacher. I, you know, teaching background and teaching in the wine industry. I'm a teacher. And I also am someone who's highly compassionate and empathetic and sensitive, but those are things I had always 
kind of pitted against myself throughout life, you know, too sensitive, too emotional, all of those things. And when I was getting coached, I realized like, maybe this is something that I would be good at connecting with people on this deep level. And so that, that was kind of the ball that started rolling. Um, I started my coaching business then, and it has, it, it, you know, took a little while to get off the ground and I kind of had a lot of mind drama (laughs) getting it started, but it has been going extremely well. And I actually started with teaching women self-love for their body. Um, I experienced disordered eating and, um, lifelong negative body, like really negative body image, um, really hating myself for my body. And so through therapy and my own personal coaching, that is what I had worked on. So I started coaching in that area. And then naturally I started getting entrepreneurs as clients. Like it just organically started happening that way. And I realized that what I was teaching women about loving their body was no different than loving yourself as you're building a business. Because I realized that the the challenges, the anxieties, the stressors, the sometimes self-loathing and self-judgment, not sometimes self-judgment, the frequent self-judgment was no different. It was like taking, you know, lifting up one um, set of challenges and judgments from myself to finding myself in another set of challenges and judgments in building a business. All of the limiting stories that I believed about not being smart enough, not being good with money, not being a business person, um, not being good on camera and you know, all the things were coming up. And so I recognized too, that something I had been drawn to was purpose. You know, I really was big on what is my purpose? What am I meant to do here? And one day I was reading a devotional, um, on my, on an app I read every morning on my phone. And it talked about this word anava, which is the Hebrew translation for humility. And it talked about as, as um, you know, in our society, we've been taught to play, to be humble. You know, that's like a be humble. Don't be, don't be too braggy. Don't talk. Yeah. yeah. And it talked about that. There's actually another side to humility that we have not been taught. And this anava translation talks about this or really explains this. And it's that we were created each of us for purpose and to take up massive amounts of space. We're all created really big. I get like chills every time I talk about this for really big purposes here to connect, to serve. And when we play humble, like we play small the way we've been taught to, which is don't impose on others. You know, don't think too highly of yourself. Don't, don't, you know, brag all of those things. We actually end up imposing and imparting ourselves on others anyway, in a much more negative way, because when we don't allow ourselves to step into our full occupancy of what we're created to do, we breed negative feelings like resentment and frustration and anger and other things. And inevitably those feelings, those negativity, they breed and they end up coming spilling out onto our loved ones, the closest people to us. And so in our attempt to play humble, we end up actually doing exactly what we have, you know, intentionally set out not to do. And so the other side of Anava is that to be humble in humility, you must take up your God-given space. You must play big and occupy your space. And when I read that, something clicked inside of me that that is what I'm meant to do. Um, I recognize in my own entrepreneurial journey, which I had never been an entrepreneur before this, that it may not be exactly what you do as your service or what you sell that is your purpose. Um, Maybe for some people it is, but it's the the journey of entrepreneurship, right? Because to become an entrepreneur, especially an online entrepreneur where your face, you are the brand, your service is the brand. Most of the time, if you're an online entrepreneur, unless you have a product, um, you are going to bump into every limiting belief you've ever believed about yourself. Every story that you've ever held that, you know, everything that's ever held you back is going to rear its head and it's going to give you all the reasons why not. And so the growth 
that we experience as an entrepreneur, I believe is a miracle. I believe it is where we grow into the version of ourselves that we are meant to be. Again, whether or not the actual service or product is the purpose, I just believe the path of entrepreneurship expands us to occupy our full space. So yeah. that is how I came to be a coach. That is how I came to be a business coach. Um, and that is what I do with my clients is I help entrepreneurs overcome all of these stories and limiting beliefs that they that hold them back from occupying full space in the way of sharing their gifts with the world in the way of making a lot of money in the way of um, doing what they love and creating a life that feels amazing to them. Yeah. Um, I, I found myself very captivated by what you were saying. <laughs> You're talking. Um, usually I interject uh, earlier, but um, I wanted to say too, like when you were talking about burnout happening through your, your different um, careers, I always find it so fascinating that like we don't realize we do the same thing over and over, but in different areas of our lives. And mm -hmm. it's almost like, I, I know for me, I have been going through this journey as well. It's like, okay, so why do I keep doing that? Like, what is it about that, that keeps me stuck? And I know for my clients, a lot of it is like, you know, they go on a diet and then that they, they go for it for a little bit and then they gain the weight back. And then they're like, Oh, I should really pick another diet again. I'm like, no, that's not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This, this recurring pattern, but like, it sounds like you were burnt out in like pretty much everything that you did. Even if you look at it in a weight loss perspective too, or, or your body image, I mean, there was some burnout there of like, why, why am I doing this to myself? You know, like enough yeah. is enough. A hundred percent. And I think too, what you're saying about, um, you know, the journey, I grew up as a professional ballet dancer. For me, it was the thrill of getting on stage. You know, it was, and a lot of people can relate in whatever your goals are, whatever that carrot is, whatever that award is that you want. We are constantly like, yes, that is what I want. Weight loss is a perfect example. People want to be a size, whatever. You don't want to be a size, whatever you want to learn how to become that person, that version of whatever you're trying to achieve. It's not mm -hmm. the, the, the weight loss, the gold or whatever. That's just the cherry on top. That's the whipped cream and the cherry. And yeah. I don't think enough people like, you know, we all hear these memes of like, enjoy the journey, enjoy the process. But like, I never really understood that until I dove into the mindset aspect of like, no, you're really, you need to become Oh, and it's not like, I think some people get fearful, like, oh my gosh, who am I going to become? You're still you, <laughs> yeah. but you become who you want to be the goals that you aspire to. So I love yeah. that you help women on this too, as well. Well, and I think, I think to your point, Nicole, it's like, you know, we, we can, again, there's so many parallels between weight loss and like you said, any carrot, but business mm -hmm. goals. Right. Yeah. And the thing about becoming that person, like I have this sign in my office right behind me that says, um, set a goal so big that you can't achieve it until you become the person who can. Mm. And I, I think that it's like the reason we have to become that person is so we can hold the goal. I don't know about you, but I would guess, uh, hearing that what, you know, what you say that and knowing a little bit about you, that, um, you're a highly ambitious person who is, achieved a lot in your life. Right. And your listeners are probably in the same, but whatever that may be yeah. school work, you know, personal, whatever it may be. And I think we continue to go when you're talking about why do we keep doing the same things? It's because we just know to do right. We, mm -hmm. we know at the A level, the, the action level, um, or the action step. And we've been taught in this culture of like, hustle, 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 yeah. take action, massive action. So we do, and we can achieve those goals. And what I experience in weight loss and business is you can achieve the goals, but then the reason you gain or gain them back, or the reason you slip in mm -hmm. your business, or the reason you spend all the money that you make is because you're not the person yet that can hold the goal. Right. And I think that that is why when people talk about becoming a next level version of you. Again, it's like you said, it's not a different person. It's the growth, right? It's the expansion of you. 
into that full occupancy of your space so that you can hold it. Because especially with weight loss for me, it was like, I would, I mean, how many different times I could tell you probably hundreds of times that I got to a goal weight and I couldn't hold it because I didn't believe that that was who I was. My self-concept yeah. wasn't there. Right. Yeah. And it's happened to me in business too, where I've reached a big financial, you know, revenue goal and the money was gone or then it was like not coming again. It felt like it would never come again. And it was because I didn't believe I could hold it. Yeah. And so, you know, you see a lot of people in the world that are successful that are constantly in the doing level. They're constantly in the action line and they're not working on who they're being. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that when we talk about being a new level, I mean, being a new version or becoming the person that can achieve that goal, it's not really in the achieving it's in the holding of the Mm -hmm. goal. Yeah. And that requires a whole different skill set because most of the time we're not asking you to speed up. We're asking you to slow down, to speed up. This is something I work with a lot with my clients and it's uncomfortable, so uncomfortable to slow down. Yeah. Yeah. Because especially I know in business, you know, and even in weight loss, we're told to do, do, do like do some more cardio, do, do more hours in the gym, do this, do Mm -hmm. all that. Um, yeah. One of the things that I had tweaked in my business uh, a while back is like, not just teaching people how to lose weight, but like, as you're going through that process, I'm teaching you how to maintain it. And which is exactly Mm -hmm. what you're talking about is being able to hold that, you know, be at the weight. And, you know, I think the other thing that people think is like, once you get there, it's just stat, like it's, it's stuck. Like you're just there. And that's not true. It's constantly kind of ebbing and flowing a little bit, just depending on, is it ebbing really big? Like if you're, if we were talking weight, is it like, you know, you lose 20 pounds, then you gain 25 and then you lose, you know, the 25, but then you, you know, or how, how much are you vacillating, I guess is, is Mm -hmm. the way to put it. Um, but understanding that, you know, once you get there, there's a whole nother level of skills that you need to keep doing in order to, to be that way. Um, I love, um, one of the sayings it's called be, do, have, Mm -hmm. and most of the time it's, we think it's do have be, I think is the way it goes. Yeah. So, but like to be, you have to become the version of who you want to be. Then you do the things, then you have the goal, then you have the carrot. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we just have it backwards. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is we have been taught that we've literally been conditioned through school um, and other Mm -hmm. systems, right. That once you can get that degree, once you can make that grade, once you can graduate from this program, then you can have what you want Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. And be right. Yeah. Yeah. So for sure. It's a conditioning thing. Yeah. Like think about going to college, you do college, then you get the degree, then you have the job that's supposedly waiting there for you. That doesn't always work that way. Yeah. 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 We're definitely conditioned that way. So let's dive into, um, the topic a little bit. I know we've been talking about it, but like, I want to make sure that we hit the three points that you, um, dove into. So go ahead. First yeah. One so was, you want to start with the, was it burnout? The first one? Yeah. So yeah, whichever one you want to start with. Burnout is, especially in online business, I have found it is really sneaky and sa- same for any other profession, right? Cause when I was a teacher or when I was doing training, it was the same thing. It's sneaky. Um, we, I think we think about burnout as like, it hits you and you're exhausted and you're unhappy and then you have burned out. But burnout is a, is a slow burn. I mean, I think that's why we call it like burn, right? Because a burn is, is a slow thing and it's really sneaky, um, especially as an entrepreneur because we are, we love what we do and because we are the face of the brand, we will, you know, sort of, um, sacrifice our life at the altar of our dream Mm. and call it, um, you know, call it the, the, like we're living the dream, but we're not living the dream. If we are 
never present with our family. If we have FOMO always checking our phone um, or FOMO of being away from the computer or whatever. And um, I experienced this in entrepreneurship too, but it was really different than the other times before because with the other jobs, I got to that point where I was like, I hate this. I no longer want to be in this place. Mm -hmm. I never got to that place with entrepreneurship because I still have always loved and been really passionate about what I'm doing. But I found the sneakiness was that, again, I was sort of like sacrificing my life at the altar of the dream. Like this is for my passion in this, in the name of passion, you know, looking around going, whoa, 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 whoa. Where's my life here? Yeah. Um, I think, I think, cause I'm an entrepreneur obviously too, but like, I think it's your baby. Do you know what I mean? Like when you create a business, a lot of people are very attached to it. I'm still attached to mine. I mean, but like, yeah, you know, and I think just even the scenario when you have kids, you know, there's that thought of like, as an infant, you're, you're constantly taking your, your sleep deprived and all that. And I feel like there's a lot of that, that correlates with when you first start your own business, like you should sacrifice, yeah. you should work 80 hours, you know, do whatever it takes. And yeah, it's the same thing with weight loss. It's like, do whatever it takes. No, <laughs> you need yeah. to find some sort of, I, I hate to, to use the word balance because I don't think we're ever really in balance, but like you have to enjoy the process. Mm-hmm. You have to enjoy exactly what we're talking about. I, I like to use the word harmony versus mm-hmm. balance. That's better. Find a harmony. And you know, Nicole, I've thought that I've thought that a lot too about the business being your baby. And I think that that is probably one of the thoughts that I have flipped on its head that my business is not my baby. Um, my business is my business and I love it. And I mean, when I say obsessed, I don't mean like, you know, but it's like some days I feel like just obsessed with it. Like I just love it so much. I'm so grateful for all the people that I serve and things, but at the end of the day, it's, it's not my baby because when I'm gone, I don't really hope that at my funeral, people are talking about what a great businesswoman I was, right? Mm -hmm. I hope that they're talking about that. I loved people really well. Like I hope that the people that are there at my funeral are, are talking about me loving people really well and being present in my life and having enjoyed my life. And I think that was a hard pill to swallow because yes, you instinctively feel that way about the business, but it leads to these sneaky burnout things of, you know, where you're constantly checking your phone, but you're at work. And so you justify it. Um, or you are, you know, like I was finding myself, my husband and I were arguing because he would say, come sit on the couch with me and watch Netflix. And I'd say, I'll sit with you, but I'm going to have my earbuds in Mm. because I'm going to be listening to a business podcast and taking notes. Or I would find myself rushing my kids through bedtime, like hurry up, hurry up here. So I could get to my bed and read a personal development or business book rather. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I recognized I was on the path to burnout and it felt a little bit different this time because again, in the name of the dream in the name of the passion in the name of like, well, that's just normal. When you're starting a business, you have to work all the time and sacrifice. Um, But I think the key to building a business and not burning out or reaching your goals and having success without burnout is number one, just to be aware (laughs) when you are doing these things. So where a question I would ask to you all in the audience that are listening, if you feel like you may be on the verge of burnout, or even if you're not even aware that you're at the verge, you just know you're overworking, right? Because many of us just overwork and we call it again, well, it's the passion. It's the dream. It's the awareness. So it's getting really honest with yourself. Where are you sacrificing your life for the dream? You know, where are you not being present and being very honest with yourself about that? Where, who in your life, because for me, it was my, my kids and my husband saying things like, mama, put your phone down. Mama, do you like your phone better than me? I mean, those are hard pills to swallow as a mom. You don't, you don't, you know, and I would, when they would say that to me, I would say, I have to work. You don't understand mommy's mommy's working. Right. And I kind of like justified that. Or with my husband, like, but do you want me to make money this month? Okay, then you're going to let me listen to my podcast, (laughs) right? Like, and so it's being really honest in those areas and then really kind of reevaluating what, who you're being, right? Do you like who you are being? 
And so that's another, these are like kind of deep, right? But it's like, do you like who you're being when you are, you know, even if you have a thriving business, do you like who you're being with the people in your four walls? Yeah. Um, and those are some hard questions to ask, but if you really get honest with yourself and the answer is no, I don't like who I'm being. No, my life outside of the business is not, um, it's not like it's, this business is actually detracting from the quality of my life. Then it is time to really check in about like, where are you putting in the effort in your business? And I'm willing to bet you are putting in a lot in the A-line. You are doing, 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 and we can go back to like, you know, the weight loss example too. You're doing all the things, but you're not working at the level of changing the belief that I can have a business and I can have my life. And again, balance, I don't think is, is real. Like, I don't think there's ever a time where you're like, but it's, it's recognizing that you can be harm harmonious, right? And the way to do that is a, just being really self-aware. And then B is once you're, once you're self-aware and honest with yourself, you need to ask yourself, like, who do I want to be as I'm building this business? Yeah. And what that answer may be like, I want to be a present mom. I want to, you know, have a great relationship with my husband. I want to take weekends off. I don't want to be stuck in my phone all the time. Then you have to then experience discomfort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think going back to what we talked about earlier is like, there's an expectation that if you don't slow down, like if you, I'm sorry, if you, you have to keep up this pace in order for you to be successful. And that's not the case. That's like, a thought, right? That is a, <laughs> it's thought. Just a thought. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, and I want to just note for those of you that are listening, who are not familiar with the model, um, Susie is talking about the A-line, meaning the actions that we do. So if you hear her say A-line, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, that. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so yeah, I just think that you know, like we were saying earlier, just like, there's this mentality of like, you just do, 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 and you keep pushing through until you get the success that you want. And then you have to keep do, do, doing to maintain that success. Mm -hmm. And what you do, tell me if I'm wrong, is you kind of flip that on its head and you're like, no, we're going to slow down so you can focus on your business and find your priorities and find how you want to be who, which, you know, who, what kind of entrepreneur do you want to be? What kind of mom do you want to be if you're a mom or what kind of relationship do you want with your husband? Um, all those balances, those, those things that intertwine and are home harmonious, like that's really the key because again, like we were saying too, is like the goal is not what you're after. Yes. Money is great because it allows you to do lots of fun things and different things and allows you freedom. But that's what you want it for. You don't want the money for the money. Just like you don't yeah. want the weight loss for the weight loss. You want it to feel something in your body. You want to feel sexy. You want to feel in control. You want to feel confident, all those things. Um, so yeah, I, I love all that. Yeah, and I think it leads into the next point about self-love and business. Um, because the truth is just what you just said. Another way that I phrase that is love yourself here. And mm -hmm. so- the, the thing is, you know, we, we have these, I get like you, I love that, you know, dangling the carrot, we, we dangle these carrots in front of ourselves of success, whether it be a certain size, um, a certain look that our body has a certain income level in our business, a certain client load in our business, a certain car house, whatever. And we have this programmed thought as, as like a society. So, right. You're not alone. If you feel this, I feel this, we all, Nicole feels this, yeah. we all feel this. When I achieve this, it's the, it's the old model of do have be right. When I do these things, then I'll have this thing. Then I'll be happy. Then yeah. I'll be content. Then I'll be successful. And the truth is what Nicole was talking about. The, it's be, do have, and I call that love yourself here. And it really, I focus on self-love and trust a lot with my clients because what I, what it means is let's use a body example. You have to learn to love yourself at the size that you are right Absolutely. before you can, and that's how you will hold the smaller size of yourself. Right. That, and, and that's how you have to love yourself at the stage of your business that you are. Um, and you, but, but what happens is we judge ourselves. Self-judgment is the antithesis of success. 
when we are constantly judging ourselves for not being where we think we should be yet for telling Mm -hmm. ourselves we're behind, we're telling, you know, the comparison game, the imposter syndrome, all of that is self-judgment and love yourself here and self-love in business is you have to look at where you are and you have to find a sufficiency there. And so it is being what you want now. And so like Nicole said, you think the weight loss or you think this, the money success is going to bring you the happiness, but we have seen uh, anybody who's been on an, an up and down weight loss journey knows that the weight loss without the mindset work, without the soul work doesn't bring you happiness. Um, and same with money, right? And any other thing. Uh, so we have to, we have to do the uncomfortable work of what would it look like to, okay, if I think when I've lost 50 pounds or when I think when I've hit 100K or whatever it is that you want, how will I feel? I'll feel freedom. I'll feel um, content. I'll feel joy. I'll feel sexy, whatever it is. How can I feel that now? That is the work. That's self-love and business. That's love yourself here. That's be, do, have. And it is so uncomfortable. It's not about doing more. It's not about learning more. It's not about more and more and more. It is about less. It's about unlearning. It's about peeling back the layers. It's about doing less and being more who you are. It's about coming Mm -hmm. home to the truth of who you are. And it works perfect in both of the scenarios that we teach, right? Business and weight loss, because it's about acceptance and love of yourself where you are. And that friends is the only way that you will find those feelings. They'll truly be yours and you can hold them. Otherwise you'll be on a lifelong, you know, goose chase for those things. If you're only looking for the external thing, the weight loss, the body's, you know, physique, the money, the relationship, and this is deep work. It's internal work. And it is, it is the key. Yeah. I, um, I'm making a note as you're (laughs) talking, but like, I know for in my, um, area, a lot of women are so scared and fearful of loving themselves where they are because they're afraid they're not going to want to lose weight at that point, Mm. which is interesting because then they're in that judgment and you're like, well, what's wrong with being the weight that you are, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's interesting. I had a client call the other day and we were talking about, um, it basically it came around to like, I asked her, what are your thoughts about skinny people? And she was like, they're better than me. And I was like, do you know a skinny person who hates like her body? And she was like, yeah. So I find it fascinating because we don't allow our brains to go to that space because, you know, like you're saying, uh, I'll use weight loss as an example. If you think you're going to be happy in a size zero, there are tons of women out there who are size zero and are miserable. Mm -hmm. Like that's not truth. And there's a whole nother realm of things that go along with being that size. And um, I love that you said the uncomfortableness because Like, again, I think that most people for weight loss, they feel like, you know, again, you got to go to the gym, you got to eat a certain way and all this. And that for them is uncomfortable, but that's not where the uncomfortableness is. (laughs) It's right between our ears. (laughs) Right. It's all that mind drama that we go through. And that's the same thing with business. I mean, it is so parallel. It's, it's, it mindset just blows my mind. Like it just is fascinating (laughs) how interesting, how like interwoven it all is, you know, it is. Well, and I think it's fascinating too, that we will, we will again, sacrifice for our dream and be uncomfortable in those, again, in the action line, in the diet changes, in the gym, in the, you know, working long hours, all of the things, but we aren't willing to sit in the discomfort of changing the emotion, right. Or being with the uncomfortable emotion and, and not making it mean anything. Yeah. Um, Actually, so that's the key before you go on that is the key of not making it mean anything to not you. Making it mean anything. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So Brooke Castillo, she's the founder of the Life Coach School. Um, Nicole, I know you're familiar with her. Not sure all of your audience would be, but she is a very successful female entrepreneur. And she has a quote, she said this, and I just thought it was so profound. She said, I think she makes like $50 million a year or something like that. I'm crazy. Yeah. And she said, um, I'm going to butcher the the quote, but it's <laughs> something along the lines of the only reason I am at the level of success that I am is because I'm more willing to feel my feelings than others. I'm more willing. And what she means is more willing to feel the uncomfortable, negative feelings and not make them mean anything. Right. So if we can feel shame or defeat or humiliation or, um, you know, even self-loathing, if we can feel those things and and just say like, it's here, it's an old pattern. It doesn't mean anything about the trajectory of what's coming. Mm -hmm. I can love myself here, even through those negative yucky emotions. Mm -hmm. Then what are you going to be willing to do? Because at the end of the day, human beings are driven by our feelings. Like we do everything to seek a feeling or to avoid a feeling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't even know what to add to that. That's like, (laughs) (laughs) Susie, why don't you tell everybody, um, where they can find you and details of you. I am at Susie, S-U-S-I-E, Trigg, T-R-I-G-G, Tucker, T-U-C-K-E-R on all platforms. So I hang out most on Instagram and TikTok, um, fairly new to TikTok, but um, that is where you can find me. And I have um, decided to give you all a gift. If you are interested in business coaching, if you have an idea for a business, or if you are an entrepreneur, I'd love to give you a 30 minute coaching session for free. And so that will be linked in the show notes, Nicole. Yep, absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so you guys can go to the bottom of this podcast or wherever you're, if you're watching on YouTube, it will be in the show notes. It would also be on the website, on my website at shapeitupfitness.com. Um, just look for Susie and you'll find it. All right. So let's dive into the lightning round of questions. Okay. Everyone's favorites, except for the guests. They don't like them. <laughs> Uh, all right. So we're going to start off real easy. Cat or dog? Dog. You got a puppy. I have right? a puppy. Yes. Puppy. Yes. What kind a of Boston puppy? Terrier. She's oh, a Boston, Boston Terrier. Oh, mm-hmm. um, all right. So I always, if nobody knows this, I have a list of questions that's always in front of me and I kind of pick <laughs> based on like what jumps out at me. So I'm okay. going to go with this one. Did you have a favorite TV show growing up? I did. Yeah. So this is funny. I was such a tomboy as a little girl and He-Man. Okay. I'm going to date myself here, Mm -hmm. but He-Man was my favorite and I did not want to be He-Man. I mean, She-Ra when I was playing, I didn't want to be She-Ra. I wanted to be (laughs) He-Man. Yeah. So as a kid, that was my favorite show. I remember watching that on Saturdays when it was out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Um, let's see. Okay. If you could sit down and have a cup of coffee or tea, whatever you drink with anyone Mm. in the world, living dead, doesn't matter. Who would it be? Oh my goodness. There's so many people that would make the short list, but at the top of my mind, it it would probably at this moment in my life be Brooke Castillo because Um, she is someone I, I am not certified through the life coach school, but I learned everything I've learned through her podcast. Um, and I find her brain really fascinating and I would love to be able to sit down and just hear the way that she processes things, um, and learn from her both personally and in business. I just think she's an incredible woman with an incredible way of thinking and, that's yeah. who I would want to sit down with yeah. this moment. There are a lot. There are a lot. Yeah. And she's lighting the world on fire for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, one more. If you could pick a superpower, which would it be? Oh, um, I feel like I had an answer to this before when my son asked me and it was really good. And now I'm blanking on it. <laughs> and memory. Like, what would your superpower be? <laughs> memory. Yeah, probably memory. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I think it would be, it would have something to do with being able to like regulate your feelings. 
Mm. really quickly, you know, to be able to uh, feel anger and then be able to like bring yourself back to homeostasis of just contentment um, very fast and be able to move through that. But I will say that's the superpower of mind work. I was just right. going to say the growth the wouldn't work. happen. If yeah. You had that power. Yeah. Yeah. But it, but it is like, the, it is the superpower of thought work because, and mindset work, because you never are going to snap your fingers and not feel the feelings, Yeah. but you learn to move through them so much quicker where something used to might take oh, you yeah. down. You know, if you, let's say in your weight loss journey, you got off track and you made it mean a bunch of things. And then the next thing you know, a year later and 50 pounds more, Versus you let yourself feel those things for the week or two or day or two, and you move through them and you're right back on. So maybe that is a superpower. I already processing your feelings. (laughs) I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it never stops. (laughs) No, (laughs) it it always at at every level you are going to unveil a new beast, although it's not a new beast. It's always the same limiting belief, wearing a different disguise. And people think that when you up level, you're like going to have the shiny, like, oh, I made the new amount of money or I had the new body. And it's like, no, the up level is the part that hurts. It's the pain when you're in the up level. And it's where all the disguise people, I mean, the limiting beliefs with the disguises come out and they taunt you. (laughs) So yes, it never stops. And I feel like though, that's like, I know you talked about like purpose um, in this world. And I feel like that's, that's part of our like journey in, in this this life that we have. Cause we don't know how long we have. Um, yeah, that's a whole nother always, topic for another day. It's always, <laughs> yeah. It's always the truth back. Like the purpose is always the truth back to the, the truth of who you are. And without those challenges, without those beliefs that we would work through, we couldn't get back to our truth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to leave it at that and wrap it up. <laughs> this is a great call. I think I could talk to you all day. And <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> so thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. You are very welcome. And again, if anybody missed any of the show notes um, or the links, just check out the show notes and they will be there. If you are loving this podcast, please leave a written review on Apple. I would so much appreciate it. It helps spread the word, not just what I'm teaching, but my guests that are coming on and helping just, I mean, this message needs to be spread. Like just the, I feel like the whole mindset aspect, like if we can manage our minds, I think the world would be a better place. Um, so I will leave it at that. Have a beautiful week and I will talk to you on the next podcast.